All right, in this video, we're going to start talking about linear transformations. And um, in this context, in general, a transformation is just going to be um, an operation that takes a vector and maps it to another vector. It doesn't have to be in the same space at all, as you'll see. So I'll give a kind of a simple example, and then we'll talk about justifying whether or not some given transformations are linear or not. So um, again, a little definition. We say, um, so to be a linear transformation, uh, the following satisfied. So it says, if t is a linear transformation, we have two vectors, u and v. Um, c is a scalar. It says the following hold. It says, if we add our two vectors together and then apply the transformation, it says we get the same thing as if we, if we were to take the, uh, the transformations individually and then add them together. It says that will always be equal. The uh, second condition says if we take our vector, multiply it by a scalar, apply the transformation, we'll get the same thing as if we were to take the transformation and then multiply by the scalar. Okay, so again, what I just said, there it is in words. Um, I'm not going to read all those. It's what I just said, so feel free to take a look at that again um, if you want to think about it there for a second. So... Let's look at a couple examples here. We're going to determine whether or not these uh, transformations are linear or, or not. Okay. Um, so notice in part A, we've actually got a vector. Uh, we take a transformation from a vector in R2, and it actually maps it into R3. Part B, we've got a vector uh, that starts in R2 and, again, stays in R2. But you can kind of create any old rule that you want. And, again, you know, ve vectors can go wherever you want them to go. Okay. And again, you know, a transformation doesn't have to be linear, and that's what we want to figure out. So again, just to show you an example of a transformation, this is not the proof at all yet. Um, you know, maybe we look at this first, uh, this first example. You know, if we started with the vector for, um, you know, 15. So that's a vector in R2. It says under this, this mapping, all it says is take the first component, subtract away the second component, so we would have 4 minus 15. Then it says add the two co components together, 4 plus 15. And then it says take the first component and multiply it by 2. So we would get 2 times the first component, which is 4. And well, 4 minus 15, uh, what is that? Negative 11. 4 plus 15, that's 19. And 2 times 4, that's going to be 8. So. Uh, under this transformation, it's going to map the vector with components 4, 15 um, into uh, R3, and it's going to give us the vector with components negative 11, 19, and 8. So, again, uh, nothing crazy there. That's all it is. Just taking one vector, uh, has some rule associated with it, and it produces a new vector. All right, let's decide if this transformation is linear or not. And... Um, Oftentimes, again, when you're trying to prove something or justify something, it's just a matter of using the definitions. So um, I'm going to break this one up into two videos, and part one will justify uh, this first condition. So does T of U plus V, does that equal um, the transformations individually added together? So um, obviously, if this first condition doesn't hold, there's no point in showing the, uh, the, the, you know, the second condition about the scalar multiplication because, uh, you know, if, obviously, if one condition doesn't hold, it's not linear. But if this one holds, we'll go back and uh, show that uh, the scalar multiplication does or doesn't hold. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to pick some vectors. I'm going to let vector u have components a1, a2. Uh, we'll let vector v have components, let's say, b1 and b2. And now I'm just going to start applying things uh, individually. So if we take t of u plus v, so I'm going to find an expression for this left side. I'm going to get an expression for the left side. Then I'm going to come back, figure out an expression for the right side, and we'll just compare them, see whether or not they're equal. So vector u, that's a1 and a2. Uh, plus vector v, which has components b1, b2. Okay, so again, uh, we know how to add vectors together. We just add them a, compon a, a component at a time. So we would get a1 plus b1, and then we would get a2 plus b2. All righty, now I'm going to go back to my actual rule here. And this is the rule. This, this tells us what happens um, in this transformation. So again, um, 
you know, take the first component minus the second, add them together, and then multiply the first component by 2. So if we apply that transformation, it says again, the first thing that happens, we said was, we take A1 plus B1, we take the first component, now I've already forgotten, uh, subtract away the second component, so minus A2 plus B2. The second one said just add the first component, A1 plus B1, to the second component, A2 plus B2. And then the uh, third condition said take whatever the first component was and multiply it by 2. So we'll have 2 times A sub 1 plus B sub 1. And of course you could simplify this down if you want to. Um, you know, so if we simplify it down a little bit, we'll have A1 plus B1 minus A2 minus B2. And then we'll, it looks like we'll just have, I guess, A1. We could do, we could reorder them plus A2 plus B1 plus B2. It doesn't really matter. And then we'll have 2A1 plus 2B1. Okay, so this is what we got when we did, uh, when we summed the vectors first and then applied the transformation. So we'll come back to that in just a second. So now, so we just figured out an expression for the left side. Let's figure out an, a, an expression for the right side as well. Okay, so we'll do, uh, so now we'll figure out an expression, t of u plus t of v, thrilling stuff. Um, but again, this is important. Linear transformations get used all the time. Uh, definitely useful stuff in linear algebra. And then also good, just, you know, good way if you're kind of learning proofs. Again, just how to apply definitions. So we'll apply the transformation to vector u, so a1, a2, we'll do that one, and then we'll add to that uh, whatever we get after we apply the transformation to vector v. Okay, so now I'm, again, I'm going to use my little rule that we started with. Okay, so it says subtract uh, the second component from the first, it says add those components together, and then it says take the first component and multiply it by 2. So if we apply the transformation to our first vector, we'll just have a1 minus a2, a1 plus a2, 2a1. We'll do the same thing. We'll apply the transformation to our second vector. So we'll get b1 minus b2. We'll get b1 plus b2. And then it says take the first component and again double it. And okay, so again, we know how to add or subtract vectors. We just do it a component at a time. So a1 minus a2 plus b1 minus b2. Um, we'll have a1 plus a2 plus b1 plus b2. And then we'll have 2a1 plus 2b1. And again, this is uh, the right-hand side of that expression. So let's see. Let's compare it to what we had just a second ago and see if those are, in fact, equal. So this is what we did just a second ago. Let's go ahead and write it here since it kind of got cut off. So the question is, um, are these equal? That's what we're trying to decide. Well, it looks like we have an A1 minus A2 plus B1 minus B2. That looks good. A1 plus A2 plus B1 plus B2. That looks good. And then, hey, we have 2A1 plus 2B1. So that looks good. So this first condition um, is, in fact, satisfied. So we'll come back in uh, just a second, and we'll see if the other condition is also satisfied. And if so, we'll say, hey, this is in fact a linear transformation. And then in a separate couple videos, I'll do the exact same thing with uh, the example in part B.